In 2001, Airbus came to the table with the game-changer Airbus A380. It could fly more passengers than ever before, and it left rivals scrambling to come up with their own ideas. But not Boeing. They had an answer up their sleeve called Project Glacier, or otherwise known as the Boeing Sonic Cruiser. Before we dive right into the Boeing Sonic Cruiser, we need to set the lay of the land and why Airbus and Boeing propose two radically different solutions to the aviation problem. At the beginning of the 21st century, there was an issue with the aviation industry. Airports could only take so many flights, and landing slots were becoming increasingly expensive. Some airports, like London Heathrow and New York's JFK, actually sold slot pairs for millions of dollars. Thus, if airlines couldn't buy more landing slots, what could they do? The first solution is to increase the number of seats on board planes. The Airbus A380, the biggest capacity passenger aircraft ever built, allowed airlines to fly more seats on routes without increasing slots. Boeing actually saw a different answer. They saw that many of the passengers flying into these airports were flying onwards to other destinations. For example, some of the passengers on a New York to London flight may have actually been trying to travel from Washington DC to Manchester in the United Kingdom. So why not allow more direct flights between these two communities? This would mean less time in hub airports and a quicker journey. As well as wanting more direct flights, passengers have demonstrated a preference for flights that take less time and an aeroplane configuration that enhances comfort. It is just common sense. People want to go where they want to go, when they want to go, how they want to go. Boeing's answer to the demand for faster flights, more direct flights, and increased comfort is the Sonic Cruiser. The first unveiling of the Sonic Cruiser. Well, what do you think? Is it good? First, Boeing came up with a new aircraft that could operate to these smaller airports, fly there faster, and target a different market segment than the very competitive Airbus A380. So what was this crazy new concept? The first biggest advantage of the Boeing Sonic Cruiser, and its namesake, was its speed. It was designed to be a subsonic aircraft flying just under the speed of sound, around 10 to 20% faster than a normal jet aircraft. This would be around Mach 0.95 and even up to 0.98 which is around 650 miles per hour or 1050 kilometers per hour. There would be no sonic boom, thus no problems, which was one of the flaws that led to the end of the Concorde. Over long distances, this speed made a big difference. A conventional flight between London and Singapore would take around about 13 hours and 10 minutes. With the Boeing Sonic Cruiser, the flight only took just over 11 hours. Going fast would also mean that the Boeing Sonic Cruiser would have to fly at a higher altitude than other aircraft, cruising at over 40,000 feet. This aircraft design would be 250 feet long and have a wingspan of 165 feet. It would use a delta wing arrangement and use canards in place of a tail. The two engines would be mounted on the rear, looking like a Cold War spy plane. It was truly different from anything else flying at the time. The Sonic Cruiser is a brand new class of flying machine. Every other commercial jet airplane has been a further refinement of the Boeing 707 said Walt Gillette, the general manager of the Sonic Cruise program at Boeing in 2002. It would carry 200 to 250 passengers to a range between 6,000 to 10,000 nautical miles. This was a huge gap in terms of range 
and was likely because Boeing planned to offer different models depending on the requirements of the airline, such as one smaller but long range model and a bigger heavy capacity model that flew a shorter distance. This is something that we have seen echoed with the Boeing 787 and the Boeing 777X program. The Boeing Sonic Cruiser would have been built with an advanced composite of titanium and ceramics. At the time, most aircraft were using a full metal body and were quite heavy, especially Boeing's rival, the Airbus A380. This composite structure would have reduced the airframe weight by around 70% and would have made the aircraft one of the most fuel efficient in the world at the time. Boeing announced the Sonic Cruiser just after the Airbus A380 to try and upstage Airbus and got some early interest from American Airlines and Virgin Atlantic for use across the Atlantic Ocean. I truly believe that this aeroplane will change the way the world flies. We expect to order between three and six aircraft, said Sir Richard Branson in 2001. Alas, like all visionary projects, there were some flaws with the design. For one, the speed was actually a crutch. Many of the airports actually had a curfew, and the Boeing Sonic Cruiser using existing slots to fly it would actually arrive before the airports opened. This would mean an expensive slot readjustment or the aircraft limited to which airports it could fly to. Unless more runways are built, the Sonic Cruiser is going to struggle because airlines would not have the slots to use the aircraft, said Richard Branson only a year later in 2002. The allure of a faster speed did not sway many airlines as well. While the speed was a great interest of passengers, it was not worth it at the cost of more fuel burn. Additionally, passengers don't really mind an additional one to two hours in flight, but airlines certainly notice the gas bill. Lastly, timing wasn't right for the aircraft. In 2001, the aviation industry took a big hit following the 9-11 attacks, and demand for the new aircraft, especially an unproven experimental one, fell. But Boeing didn't exactly give up on the concept. They may have not had much interest from airlines, but the research didn't go to waste. During development, they hit a snag with the delta wing design. It made accessing the rear of the aircraft during an airport visit difficult for service trucks and unloading passengers. Thus, Boeing designed a version of the Sonic Cruiser that had a more typical middle wing like we see on aircraft today. With the original concept of the Sonic Cruiser out, Boeing went back to this earlier middle wing design and revised it further. They relabeled it Project Yellowstone, or the 7E7, with the E standing for efficiency. The aircraft would no longer have the sonic speed, but it would burn the least fuel of any aircraft. The 7E7 would then be renamed into the 787 and become the Boeing Dreamliner that we know and love today. The aircraft would be very popular with airlines, operating at at least 20% less fuel burn than the nearest comparable model, the Boeing 767-300, and shift the aviation model away from hub to hub and to point to point. 15 years on, we can see which was more successful. The Airbus A380 has been shut down with little to no second-hand market. And the Boeing 787 is still going strong with 972 built and 1,510 ordered. A final footnote is that Boeing actually updated the Sonic Cruiser patent in 2012. This upgrade was based off research done in part with NASA on a future high-speed civilian transport concept to carry 100 passengers close to the speed of sound to around 6,000 nautical miles. Whether or not it will go ahead remains to be seen, but it seems that the dream of the Boeing Sonic Cruiser isn't dead yet. Do you think airlines should have offered faster air travel to passengers? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like down the bottom so YouTube will pump it up in the search results. 
Even a single one makes a big difference. And if you want to see more stories like this one, press that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for watching.